Hi there, welcome back to another comparison video. Today we are going to have a look at the Magic Yo-Yo Mono Metal lineup. Now I don't have every model in the Mono Metal lineup from Magic Yo-Yo, but I picked out six, I don't have enough fingers, six that are probably the most popular, at least I think they are, and probably with good reason. So let me quickly introduce you to the six different Yo-Yos we'll be looking at. The first one is the V3, which is a nice, almost slimline yo-yo with a cool thumb grind lip um, and that your normally comes with a uh, responsive bearing as well. Second one is the N12 Sharks Honor. This is a nice with the rounded edges, powerful yo-yo in an almost V-shape. The third is the N12, uh, not N12, we just had the N12, the N11 which is an organic, very rounded, with a bit of a, a cut step in between, near response system. Yo-yo, uh, very comfortable, very organic. Then come the two main yo-yos in the Y lineup, the Y01 node, which is a nice V-shape with extra thick rims, and the Y03 Hertz, and the Y03 Hertz probably their most popular model at this time but uh, we'll have a look at that and last of all one that um, I didn't know was that good but a friend recommended it to me the K8 and the K8 is a very a bit of an oversized v-shaped model so that's the yo-yos we're gonna have a look at I'll do the standard tests of spin time finger spin time uh, look at longer combos see how they are in, uh, in speed combos and how they are in horizontal play. And I think that covers almost everything. Oh, and thumb grind and grind tricks, of course. So that should be it. So uh, let's go. First yo-yo we look at is the V3. It's a little blockish and squarish and narrow feeling. It plays with lots of power, however. This is the first yo-yo to do a spin test. We don't have any comparisons yet. First test is the long combo. And this includes lots of different elements, redirections, pops, suicides. There's just a lot in there that will test the limit of the yo-yo. And at the very end of the, yo of the uh, combo, I do a number of branding repetitions to see how well it holds up while being played with. And you can see, despite me making an error every now and then, and it being a mono metal, you can still do quite a lot of repetitions of the trick branding at the end of the long combo. Next up is the speed combo. This gives a feel of how the yo-yo moves. This one is fairly quick moving. Um, it has a tendency, because it's a little bit more narrow, to miss the string every now and then, but I'm not showing that. Next up is grind tricks. This has a nice smooth finish for grinds. It does decently, but because of its narrow width and the tight gap, it tends to go off balance on the finger roll. For thumb grinds, the COO is excellent. It has a nice overhanging thumb grind lip. None of the yo-yos we're testing today are exactly made for finger spins. Um, this one's no exception. It does okay, but it's not great for it. Not a fan of this yo-yo for horizontal play. It's just a little too narrow. Next up is the N11. A nice monometal, organic feeling yo-yo. Lots of round shapes. It's very comfortable in the hand, but still has plenty of weight and power. Despite it being about the same weight as the V3, however, it doesn't do as well in the spin test, I suspect because of the smaller diameter of the yo-yo. We do the same long combo again here, sped up a little so that we get through it a little quicker, and then do repetitions of branding at the very end. And as you can see, a decent amount of brandings were possible. Maybe even more could have been possible. In the speed combo, it works well. It's a little sluggish feeling. It feels a little heavier than the V3, even though it's uh, about the same weight. 
the N11 has a very slick finish, which doesn't, which doesn't make it ideal for grinds. It tends to want to run off the hand, as you can see. Uh, this also makes it slow down a lot more on grinds so that the binds aren't as tight. For thumb grinds, it's all right. It's not meant perfect for it, but it does okay. As you can see, I can get a nice long thumb grind out of it. This yo-yo is also not great for finger spins, but because of the sticky, slick finish, uh, it does, does not do as well as the V3. It is not made for horizontal. It's not, it doesn't feel stable. I tend to miss a lot in it. Uh, the gap width is small, or the gap is small, so it's harder to land on it. Um, I mean, if you try enough, you practice enough, you can do horizontal with it. It's just not made for it. Next up, the N12 Sharks Honor. A bit more of an all-rounder than the N11. Free spinning times, decent. Uh, around the same as the V3. Um, just decent spin times. For the long combo, it does well. It feels stable. It's fairly easy to land tricks. I can get through the whole thing. I think I got through it in one try. Um, it worked just as an excellent yo-yo. Lots of brandings possible at the end. This yo-yo moves faster than the N11, but not as quite as fast feeling as the V3. It is, however, easier to land things with this one than the V3, just because of its width. Finger grinds are a dream with this thing. The finish is perfect for it. It's stable. Um, you can just keep on going with it, uh, and it gives off a decently snappy bind at the end. Thumb grinds are not ideal for it. You can do them at an angle, but it doesn't have an overhanging thumb grind lip, so it's not great for it. It's possible, as you can see, but not great. Finger spins are okay. It has a flat cup on the inside, which makes it okay, but it's not super stable. It tends to wobble a lot. For a mono metal, it's pretty good for horizontal. It lands on the string easy and moves decently and stays fairly stable. We then get to the YO1 node, which is a lot heavier than the previous yo-yos we've used, uh, but it's nice and wide and feels comfortable in the hand. On spin times, we get a nicely uh, solid average, about the same as the N12. It's fairly stable and spins for a long time. For the long combo, once again, it does well. Uh, it's easy to land most tricks. I can get through it just fine. I made a couple of mistakes, but that's not the yo-yo's fault. Um, just really solid yo-yo for good long combos. And I was able to do a nice amount of brandings at the end once again, even though I screwed up. This is not a fast feeling yo-yo, but it does move nicely and the width and uh, catch zone make it easy to land tricks, you know, even if you're doing them fast. It's great for grinds, it's stable, it has lots of power, the finish is nice and smooth. Um, just good yo-yo for it. And since it has a nice overhanging thumb grind lip, once you catch it, uh, it keeps on going for a nice amount of time. For a yo-yo with a nub in the cup, it does good for finger spins, but once again, these yo-yos are all not made for it and not perfect for it. Just like the N12, this does decently in horizontal. It's stable and it catches easy. Up next, the younger and much lighter brother of the YO3 node, YO1 node, the YO3 Hertz. Despite its much lighter weight, it does very well in the spin test, possibly because of its larger diameter.
the long combo does excellent. Um, it's not a problem to land all the tricks. I think I once again got, well, apart from missing a couple of times, I got most of my tricks in one go. I got through the whole combo and was able to do a nice amount of brandings at the very end. This yo-yo does very well in the speed combo. It moves fast, it feels light and weightless, um, and stays nice and stable during the combo. It does excellent on finger grinds. It's nice and stable and returns afterwards with plenty of power. Same for the snap grind bind. Boom, not bad. Thumb grinds, it's not great for it. It doesn't have an overhanging lip like the yo one was, does, like the note does, but once you land it at an angle, it's okay. For finger spins, this yo-yo is just okay, once again. It's not terrible for it, there's worse yo-yos out there, but it's also not great for it. It did well on the simple horizontal combo that I use. Last but not least, the biggest yo-yo in this pack, the K8. And for the spin test, it does decently. Nothing special, nothing terrible, just kind of in between. It holds up well during the long combo. Uh, it's width and big catch zone make it easy to do tricks with. Um, Near the end I was missing sometimes, but that makes sense because of, uh, I've been doing these tricks for a while. But it doesn't decent amount of brandings at the end. Its weight being spread out over a bit bigger size, it feels lighter than, you, than it, it really is. Uh, it moves fairly well through the speed combos. The finish on it is pretty good for grinds. It's nice and stable. And it does a nice bind at the end of the grind. Nice and snappy. For thumb grinds, this one is terrible. It has no overhanging lip. In fact, it has like a slope, which makes that you almost have to throw a finger spin to be able to catch a thumb grind. And on the finger spin front, it's okay. It's once again comparable to the other ones in this series of yo-yos. This, out of this series, is my favorite yo-yo to do horizontal width. Its width make fairly stable during play, to the point that I was even able to do other combos fairly easy with it, uh, and uh, still bind it. All right, conclusion time. So let's go through these one by one. The V3, great yo-yo as a beginner, you get the option of also putting in a responsive bearing. Honestly, it's all the yo-yo you need if you just want to play every now and then. You can do almost any trick with it that you want. It's a great yo-yo, it's cheap, it's just a fun yo-yo. It's not my favorite to play with, it's, it's a little angular, uh, it feels a little narrow, but it is light, fast, has plenty of power. So, good yo-yo for the money. Just not my favorite out of the bunch. The N11. One of the better cheap organics on the market. It really does play well. It's an organic yo-yo. If you want that old school rounder feel, it's great. It has plenty of stability and power. Uh, the finish is a little slick. You either like that or you don't. If you do lots of finger grinds, you probably won't like that. But if you just want to play around with it, it's, I think it's 20 bucks. It's a great yo-yo, uh, good fun. Decent all-rounder, just not like great for everything. The N12, Shark's Honor. Probably my favorite one in the bunch. It's dirt cheap, it's a tank, um, lots of power, it's comfortable. It's, like I said, it's dirt cheap. I think it's $14 at the moment, and that's including shipping if you buy from Magic Yo-Yo Direct. 
It's just a great yo-yo for very little money. If you want something to throw into a backpack, get one of these. Just a good yo-yo. I really like it. The only thing it's not good for is thumb grinds. And if you don't do a lot of those, you don't really have a problem with that. Um, one of my favorites, probably. The and yeah, Y01 node. Great. Lots of power, lots of stability, comfortable, great yo-yo. The little nub in the middle is kind of weird, but it's it doesn't bother during play, even during finger spins, it's not too bad. It's a little more expensive than the Shark's Honor, but I think it's still under 20 bucks for most colors. Great yo-yo. Um, if you value power and stability over speed, uh, you'd rather have this one than its younger brother. The Y03 Hertz, also great, feels faster, but it feels a little less powerful, a little less stable. If you value speed, get this one. If you want a light playing yo-yo, this one is great. You saw it did great in the spin tests. It did decent in the finger spin tests. It's a good yo-yo. Either one of these will do you great. And which one is better is really a matter of preference. And the last one in the bunch, the K8. It kind of surprised me. I didn't know much about this one before, but it was recommended to me by someone I trust. So I gave it a whirl. Great yo-yo. It's nice and big. If you want something bigger to play with, K8 is a good option. Also, just like all the Magic Yo-Yos in this series, cheap. They play well. Uh, cheap, but not bad. K8 was, however, my favorite by far for horizontal play. I could play longer combos easier with it and um, just land them so much easier. So that's a wrap. In short, they're all good. They're all decent yo-yos, especially for the money you're paying. Anything in this series is just really cheap compared to a lot of other brands. Uh, you can't go wrong with them, really. Uh, so if you want to try something new but don't have a lot to spend, Magic Yo-Yo has some great options. I just showed you some of them. They have some more. There's some plastic ones that I've already talked about in previous videos. Those are also good. They're nothing special in general, um, but they're good and they're adequate and sufficient for almost anything most yo-yoers -yo will do with them. So thanks for watching. I hope you had a fun time or learned something or found something new to try. And uh, until next time, see you.